What's up? Welcome in Hogue and John's uh, coming to you. Half of us are where we normally are. The other half is uh, sitting in an airport terminal at LAX on the way home from Caleb Williams Pro Day today. It's been a, a fun day and some nice weather, Johnsy. And um, I think the Bears got their guy. <laughs> you, you think so? <laughs> the reviews so. Are, are that that great? Um, I got tons of, of questions for you. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know where you want me to begin. Um, how about this? Officially, how long are you in California for? <laughs> I mean, it's a little less than 24 hours from the time I landed, maybe 22 hours time I landed, the time I'm I'm heading back. Yeah, it's a it's a quick trip, but we got everything we needed from USC today. Okay, so bring us on campus, set the scene for us. Like, what was the atmosphere like for um, our colleague Antonio Morales? Called it the most anticipated pro day at USC since Sam Darnold in a rainy 2018. Yeah, that's funny because I, I heard others reference that um, that year where it was – and I think it was raining last year maybe during – because I heard, I heard them talk – I heard multiple USC reporters talking about how it's like, oh, it's usually raining. And all we had today was a, a little bit of a marine layer coming in off the Pacific Ocean early, and then eventually the sun got that to lift. And by the time Caleb was throwing, it was uh, beautiful weather outside. Um, oh, a sign of things to come, right? Yes, I think so. You know, as the cl- the marine layer lifted, and it's the just nothing but shining. sunny size. Here's yeah, <laughs> the future franchise face of the Chicago Bears. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he, let's do this, John's, because I we we didn't really do a ton of prep for this because I've been on such a short time. But I mean, I have everything from just what I thought about seeing Caleb live for the first time, Keenan Allen being there, um, the team's interactions really throughout the whole thing, because I was paying really close attention to like what Ryan Poles, Maddie Refluse, who they were talking to, how they were handling all this stuff, when they talked to Carl Williams at one point. Um, and then, obviously, the stuff Carl, uh, Caleb had to say when it was all said and done. So that's kind of my run-through of things we can talk on, and we can start uh, wherever you want. Well, let's start with the beginning. He takes the field, mm-hmm. and one of the first people that Caleb Williams encounters is Keenan Allen. His brand yeah. new slot receiver. I know it's not official yet, but that like that had to be an interesting interaction to see. Well, I don't know if you noticed this, but there was a minor slip up from Caleb. Um, I think when he was on NFL Network, where he was talking about Keenan Allen getting traded, and he said, "And Keenan's here for a fourth round pick." He like not here in Los Angeles, but like here on the Bears. Yes. Yes. Like. Oh no! I and got it. Like I got you. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Brody little slip, little slip up of like you know, I'm already thinking I'm a Chicago Bear a little bit. So, um, I didn't hear that live because I was obviously you know in person there. But I I did have a couple people point that out to me, and yeah, I thought it was I thought that was really cool. Look, Keenan Allen obviously lives in L.A. He was on the Chargers literally at this time last week, so. Um, it's not like he flew across the country to like be at Caleb Williams Pro Day, but for him to still come out this morning, um, I don't know if the Bears asked him to be there. Maybe he did it on his own. He does have a relationship with Caleb. He hinted at that last week during his introductory press conference at Alice Hall. And then Caleb kind of took it a step forward. I, I kind of actually think Keenan was downplaying it a little bit because Caleb made it sound like, you know, they've talked a few times. They've known each other for a year now. Um, and then Keenan just showing up in – Bears swag. He had not only a Bears top, but also Bears Just pants. <laughs> you know, and I had I have to think that was jarring for the Chargers contingent in hand <laughs> to see Keenan Allen walk around in Bears swag. Yeah, and then he's hanging out with Eberflus. This is Keenan mm-hmm. Allen, right? And then yes. did, did I see this right? And according to the photographs, Keenan Allen also went up and said, "Did he say hi to Carl Williams as well?" Y- well yes. So. um Keenan and Ryan both kind of went over the around the same time. Um, and this was also something I wanted to hit on because, you know, in some of my own reporting on this, on Carl specifically, I've had m- multiple sources, coaches in particular, talk about, yeah, Carl's around, but he stays out of the way. And look, there were so many people that were on the field today at the pro day that. If Carl Williams wanted to be on the field, he easily could have been on the field. 
And I thought it was somewhat significant that, no, I'm over here in the stands. I'm staying out of the way. Um, and, like, to the point that Ryan had to be directed over to him. Um, same thing when it was all said and done. It was actually Lincoln Riley who pointed out to Matt Eberflus where Carl was. He, there's actually video of him kind of pointing over in that direction, and then Matt Eberflus went over and shook his head. They talked for about 45 seconds or so before Matt uh, left the you know the vicinity of the practice field. So, yeah, that, that all caught my eye. I thought that was very interesting. And I have to say, like, obviously I couldn't hear what their conversations were about, but the way in which they were interacting, it was either the first time they had ever met or it's one of them. Okay. I, I don't know for sure, but they didn't – it looked like an introduction. Um, maybe they've talked on the phone and it's the first time they've ever met in person. I don't know. And, again, I'm, I'm kind of speculating there. I don't know the, the, the full answer. But they did not talk like people that have, like, you know, that had dinner together last night or anything like that. Yeah. So, but there was a dinner last night or Monday night. Yes. I don't know what Quick type of Shout timeline. out, by the way. Um, my buddy uh, and colleague here does such a great job. Nicholas Moriano is next to me and he just handed me this awesome uh, uh, tripod to mount this camera on. So now, now we're like a real professional. Everyone wants to say hi to Nick. <laughs> Nick's been working out, I can see. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. There we go. Now we're looking good. Here we go. Stable. Um, all right, so but the Bears got in Monday night, right? There was yes. dinner with, with teammates, apparently. Like this, yes. so this was like a full-blown fact-finding mission by the Bears, and I'm not surprised by it. Like I would have expected as much. Or even like sometimes they have the pro day, they have dinner after the pro day. We hear stories like this all the, all the time. But apparently they got ahead of things and got to know Caleb – for a couple days in a row here. Yeah. So I knew about the dinner that happened. Um, I'll give, I'll give Brad big some credit on the little nugget about uh, other teammates being there. I didn't, I didn't get that part. So, you know, good on Brad for getting that. Apparently it was a dinner with the bears, Caleb Williams and some of his teammates so they could get a better idea of how he actually interacts with teammates. Um, and then yesterday, so that's a little abnormal. Like dinner the night before pro day would be more normal coming out two days ahead of it, having the dinner two nights ago, and then actually spending time yesterday on the campus, um, kind of treating it. I, I, as I understand it, like sort of more of the stuff you do on the 30 visit back at the facility um, where you're, Going, you know, we're going through meetings. We're talking about whiteboard, uh, way more time than you have at the NFL combine on those shortened meetings. So, yeah, the Bears definitely took advantage of this opportunity. Um, and by the way, that's not just the Bears kind of scheduling out two days in advance, that's also Caleb Williams and his team. Um, saying, Hey, look, they're coming here two days before the actual pro day is happening. This isn't just going to be like because uh, remember, he's training in Jacksonville. He was at the Players' Championship last weekend. You know, I don't exactly know when he flew back to L.A., but um, from what I understand and talking to a couple sources on this, like part of the rescheduling or scheduling of some of this stuff, um, part of the reason why it's been a little bit of a headache is just because Caleb has so many obligations and he has a team of people scheduling this stuff for him. So when he's asked, like we asked him after – the pro day was over, you know, when are you taking your 30 visit to Chicago? And he says, I don't know. He might literally not know because somebody else is handling this stuff for him. Yeah. Like, like what other obligations, I guess, like beyond like training other appearances. Is that what, is that what's going on? I, I don't know specifically what they are, but I just understand his schedule is pretty busy. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're channeling, even though it seems like it's, fairly obvious he's going to be a Chicago bear. I still think other teams are trying to get him to take some visits. Yeah. Um, I, obviously I don't know on the marketing side of things, what deals or things like that are going on, but um, th this is somewhat of an abnormal prospect. It seems like John Z like this isn't just your, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, no, he's a that? superstar already that he's, that's the thing. He's already a superstar. And I don't, I think the bears need to embrace this. Um, and embrace the abnormality of it because the reality is once he gets in the building, once it's a Monday on game week, 
that all goes out to the window. It doesn't guy. matter. I mean, the only people in the building are Bears employees and the annoying people like us that hang out in that dark room with cubicles. That makes you fall asleep. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the idea of like the 30 visit, that's like a medical visit now. If, if, if you want to look yeah. at it that way, in terms of like the importance of it, the duration of it, um, the scope of it, it's different than than other top 30 visits where you kind of take these guys around the office and introduce them to all sorts of different vice presidents and directors and whatnot. So like if you're another team like, like the Giants and you just want information on Caleb Williams, like part of that is probably getting the medical on him. But I wonder where he cuts off his 30 visits. You know, like is it just the Bears, Washington, and New England? That's it? Like I'm not going anywhere else. Maybe there's a surprise fourth team. It'll be interesting to see. Well, and, and that's where I'm trying to sort through the weeds a little bit on why the specific date. Uh, there seems to be a reluctance to say it publicly. Uh, my understanding is that there's a some mutual dates that are out there that, you know, if it, eventually it's going to happen. Um, I don't think either side is really worried about it. But I wonder if some of this is is – having to do with what you're talking about Johns is like I think Caleb's team probably doesn't want to go on like even 10 visits probably less than that yeah it, it, if some he, players go up to like 15 sometimes some years right and it's like I, I could totally understand it from his side too being like well look if I'm gonna be a bear can this be the only visit I go on? You know what I mean? Like, why do I have to go to all these facilities, do all these medicals? Cause every time you go to one, now you're getting another physical, um, another grueling day of workouts and whiteboard and all this stuff with a bunch of teams that you're not going to be on. So I understand that side of it. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to know that this thing is a done deal and it's happening. And I, I know there was at least one report out there that it was going to happen by the end of this week. I'm not sure how that's possible because I'm pretty sure the Bears contingent is going to be in Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor on Friday at J.J. McCarthy's Pro Day. And then they got to – Poles and Eberflus need to be in Florida by Sunday for the NFL annual meeting. Yeah, yeah, the schedule is kind of condensed here. And then at the end of next week, you have Drake May and Jaden Daniels Pro Day. So if the Bears are continuing their, their due diligence, I imagine that's on their on their list. Um, Just while we're on it, since we're on the topic of just like conversations with, with Caleb Williams, Something that he said like kind of interested me a, a little bit where he's like, I didn't need to learn too much about the Bears. Um, I'm paraphrasing totally here, but he seemed to suggest as much. Like, do you get the vibe from Caleb Williams still that that he likes the Bears? Like this partnership could work from his perspective. I mean, to answer your question directly, to answer your question directly, Caleb continues when he speaks publicly to not give any indication whatsoever that there's any type of problem here at all. Um, now, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask today. You know, do you have any concerns whatsoever about being drafted by the Bears? If uh, Just take you guys behind the scenes a little bit. The um, Caleb Williams media availability today was a little bit of a cluster F. Um <laughs> It, they, they like had us along a rail and he kind of just like made his way along the rail and then like really didn't answer that many questions and walked away. So, um, but the, but the question and answer you're referring to was, you know, essentially like, what have you learned about the bears? Which was one of the questions that I was going to ask too. And I, he turned it around, you know, he, I think there's some sensitivity from his side of this to not make it seem like I'm interviewing the bears. They're interviewing me. And that was, so the answer was like, what have you learned about the bears? And he was like, well, this is really more about them learning about me. It's more about them being comfortable with me. It's more about them feeling comfortable that they're going to invest a number one overall draft pick and all that money into me. They want to know that I'm the right guy for that. And that was his answer to that question. I thought that that was significant. Yeah, here's the – I'll give you the full answer now. This is from um, Caleb Williams when asked about the time spent with Chicago Bears brass. Yeah, it was great. I didn't really need to learn too much, just building a relationship. They're trying to see if I'm the right fit to be the first pick as QB and possibly be the face of the franchise. They're trying to figure out if this is the guy they should invest all the time, energy, and effort and money into, which is obviously important in this situation. So it was great building relationships. It's the answer right so, there. Yeah. Yeah. 
and, and again, the question yeah, the question was kind of the opposite, and he turned it around into that. So, um, again, either publicly or privately, I still have not heard anything at all legitimate about you know his team not wanting to come to Chicago. I think that that's pretty much BS at this point. All right, I got one word to describe the workout, at least from what I was watching on NFL Plus. To me, it looked effortless. That's my word. Yes. Effortless. Like, you kept wanting to see him, like, rip a ball. But you know what? It just looked effortlessly thrown 60 yards down the field. And, yes, the ball hit the ground a couple times, but he ended on a high note. He showed off a lot of different clubs, as they like to say, quarterback coaches like to say. He's got a lot of clubs in his bag. He knows how to, you know, change, well, forget direction, velocity, you know, arc, all of that. Showed it all off. So, what did you see? You were there. You were on the sideline. What was it like? Yeah, and, and to be clear, I'm definitely um, somebody who does not put a whole lot of stock into, you know, the results of the pro day. One of the reasons why, why I really like to see these guys, especially quarterbacks, throw in person is to get that kind of just what you're talking about, that initial reaction. It's different when you see them in person. So, number one, effortless is a great way to put it. Um, comfortable is another way. I put in my newsletter, which is already out um, for CSGO diehards, I said everything he does just looks easy to him, to, to us or for him with us watching. Um, so in warm-ups, Johns, he was just randomly f- making some left-handed throws just because he can. He can, he can throw the ball left-handed sometimes, I guess. Uh, and that looked easy. And then during the workout, you mentioned the different clubs, whichever type of throw he was making, and he had 50 throws. I counted 46 completions. All four incompletions were deep balls. One of them was a drop. A couple of them maybe could have been caught if the routes were run a little bit better. So it was a great – even the results were great, even though I don't necessarily think that matters a whole lot. And then, just to cap it off, because he's Caleb Williams, he, he the last snap he takes – he quick kicks a punt 43 yards downfield, again, just because he can, and it's easy for him. So everything he does comes easy. There's a sense of confidence. I've been at pro days, you've been at pro days, where there's almost this anxiety in the air. It's um, like abnormally quiet, like a library, and, and you could just tell like these. Oh, I, I draft- hate when they're inside, number one. Yeah, and, and these draft prospects are nervous, and – the, the vibe was just completely different today, um, especially during Caleb's part. He was just out there having fun like he was just throwing the ball around to his friends. I mean, that's what stood out to me. And and I think that swagger, I sensed the same thing at his press conference in Indianapolis. It was just like from that very first ridiculous question he got asked, he just brushes that stuff off. And I think – so these questions that came up even back in the fall when we were talking to Josh Lucas – and, and he was telling us, like, hey, whoever's the quarterback needs to be able to handle this city, understand and handle this market. Every – again, we're talking about a couple interactions here, so it's not the full story. But from what I can tell, the couple times now I've been around him, including today, nothing really phases this kid. And I think that's going to bode well in Chicago. Just a quick thought, like, on his, his warm-up routine. Like, I, when I went and saw him in South Bend, I had never seen a warm-up routine – like quite like it. Like Drake Mays was a bit different. JJ McCarthy's in Indianapolis was a bit different. Um, like JJ, um, sorry, Drake May was just a, a good portion of it. It was him just throwing like bombs, straight bombs. And I saw Caleb do some of that, especially towards the end of his workout, like a lot of rolls to his left, the rollouts to his right and, and going deep. And, um, but he had this one early on in his like pre pregame routine where he's just doing all these different, like, arm angle things, right? All in the goal line, all in the end zone. I'd never seen anything like it, just in terms of him warming that up, like warming up like sidearm throws, underhand throws, and he's just throwing to, to, to guys in like in the back of the end zone. Um, so to your left-handed point, I think this is what he kind of does. Like he has fun out there, um, but it's also, there, there's some method to his madness, I would think. Yeah, I assume so. I mean, he was out there pretty early, Um You know, that was another one of my observations from Poles and Eberflus and really the whole Bears contingent. Like, this comes as no surprise, but I mean it very literally. Like, they were there to see Caleb Williams. So, this whole thing started 
with uh, the offensive line workouts. So you have your 40 times, you have your offensive line workouts, then you have the the timing drills for the skill position players. There was defensive workouts. There was all this stuff kind of going on before Caleb got out there with the wide receivers. And that entire time, like Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus were just like talking to people. Like they were, they weren't locked in on anyone else. They were having conversations with other people around uh, running into like Cliff Kingsbury, people like that. Uh, Dan Quinn was around like, you know, people, people from other teams, other scouts, like whatever it was, it wasn't until Caleb really started throwing that the Bears and this big contingent they had got locked in. And then they kind of fanned the field a little bit. Shane Waldron and Thomas Brown were along the sideline. Ian Cunningham stayed in the corner. Then Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles went uh, near the goal line behind where Caleb was throwing. And that's where they ended up talking to Lincoln Riley throughout a lot of the uh, throwing session. So, you know, it was kind of this very casual vibe even from the Bears until it was time to lock in on Caleb Williams. You know, that must have only been like 20 minutes of throwing when it was all said and done. You know what that visual reminded me of? Because I saw the picture and like every end zone view, the opposite end zone view of Caleb Williams, you can see Matt Eberflus just like 10 yards behind him. Um, He's like in every single shot. Yeah. Um, Remember that picture that Matt Nagy had with Ryan Day when Justin Fields is going through his workout, yes. you know, and, and how yeah. that relationship, and just the info gathering off of the head coach. Like, I thought of that when I saw the picture of Poles and Eberflus talking to Lincoln Riley, which I imagine they've had multiple conversations at this point. I thought about Matt Nagy and Ryan Day connecting over Justin Fields. And, and I'll give you even more. Like, and I haven't gotten a chance to meet this guy yet. I maybe should know who he is at this point, but there's a guy, I don't know if he's like Caleb's manager or something, but he was walking with him in Indy at the combine. He was out there on the field with him today. Um, He may have been in some TV shots wearing a Lakers hat. Um, This guy was, now he was interacting with Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus like they had known each other for a while, unlike the Carl Williams interaction. And where I'm going with this is like, whether it was Keenan Allen with this guy, um, or when Caleb came up and they said hi, like it was obvious that like the Bears were the team that was the center of attention, not Washington. Now, granted, I wasn't watching Cliff Kingsbury the whole time or Dan Quinn the whole time, but like I didn't see those this break off like huddle around the team employees in the same way that the Bears had going on uh, pretty much the entire day in the corner. Uh, of the field. So I just thought that was really noticeable. Like this was a day about the bears. It wasn't about Washington moving up one spot or anything like that to pull off this heist for Caleb Williams. I didn't even really see them talking to the Washington personnel at all. And that's saying something because Cliff Kingsbury was coaching Caleb Williams, you know, three months ago. All right. I know you got to go. Let's end it with this. My favorite interaction that I saw, at least on camera was like the end of it. All right. This is Caleb Williams. It's over. He's high-fiving his teammates. He says goodbye to Adam Peters. He says goodbye to Cliff Kingsbury. Then comes Flus. I think Harry Joseph is in there at some point. There's a hug for Ryan Poles. Then he goes back to his teammates. Back to his teammates. And all of a sudden, there's more teammates. Like, his linemen come running in from where I don't even know. I don't know. And they're jumping all over him. His center, they start to grapple like they're like high school wrestlers. And he takes them down. You're like, oh, well, well don't do that. But... He pops right up. Then he starts dancing with another teammate. Like like interactions that if you're a scout, media member, what have you, GM, coach, that's like that's what you want to see. Like those interactions that you can't get anywhere else. Like, what did you see? Did you did you see more of that? Um, well, I did see more of that because after he talked to the media and things kind of calmed down, a lot of people left. The Bears were already gone at that point, so they didn't even see this. I think it was probably the same teammate. He tried and went to get revenge on him by trying to tackle him uh, later. Because I actually missed that that initial interaction with his teammates because we were all kind of scrambling to get in a position in that media scrum. You know, you had to box people out, use your elbows a little bit um, to, to try to get in position to talk to him. Uh, I kind of saw it going on. That but the other th- indeed it's his center. Yeah. And so he went back later and I think tried to tackle him like for revenge. So, and then on top of that, too, is I would just say, and I don't know how much of this got picked up on the mics on the field on the TV coverage, but he, I mean, 
his teammates were openly cheering and like hollering when he was completing some of these tougher throws, especially the downfield ones. Um, and at one point he kind of almost looked over at them a little embarrassed too, or like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> um, like because they were, <laughs> yeah. I'm, and it, and that was kind of building throughout the workout. It was one of those things like you could tell it was going really well. And it was just like, there's sort of like this little buzz that was building throughout the entire workout, which, which is in contrast to what I was talking about a few minutes ago, where some of these pro days, especially inside, are just like these library settings. And there's like anxiety in the air. Nobody seems to necessarily be having a ton of fun. And this one really, from start to finish, had this very different, I mean, let's call it Hollywood. We're close to Hollywood here, like kind of Hollywood vibe, like superstars walking around, um, you know, and – Keenan Allen's agent, I don't know if you saw the photo, she was wearing a Death Row Records jacket. You know, like it was just, it was just like, you know, I've been to Northwestern's Pro Day like almost every year until this year. And I'm like, this is not the scene we have in Evanston for these Pro Days. Yeah. You know, I know you got to run. Like, I don't think this is acting either. Just stick with that Hollywood analogy. Because I like, I look back at my notes from the Notre Dame game and like those interactions we saw with his center. Like I made note of positive interactions with, with Caleb Williams. Like they had a ton of interaction, like before, during, after the game, um, you know, throughout number fifty-seven, Didich. Um, so something to think of, just in terms of what he could be as a team leader. Well, and I'll and, and I'll leave you with this too, John's. Like I, I just this gets back to like the Bears kind of having to embrace this guy and everything that comes with them, um, because this is going to kind of be how games are. I think going forward, like sort of, um, you know, more cutaways to celebrities up in the sky boxes or, uh, on the field before games. I mean, there's going to be a, a lot of attention that comes with it. And I just, I, I don't see why if you're the bears, you shy away from it at all. And I keep coming back to Kevin Warren on all this because like Kevin Warren, Kevin Warren is literally friends with LeBron James. Okay. He, he is well versed and, uh, connected in this type of world that exists. And I think he fully understands the benefits of it. That would, you know, what would come for the Chicago bears. Um, of course they got to win and all that, but uh, I don't see any reason to, to doubt that it's going to be a problem. Adam Hoax telling you embrace it. Everybody embrace the celebrity, embrace the opposite of sucking. I don't <laughs> embrace just dive into everything the Bears have not been for the last 10 years. Like, what's wrong with that, right? Please, for the love of God, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be all, all good. And I mean, honestly, and all, almost lost in all this sometimes. It's just like Caleb Williams is a really good player. Yeah. Yeah. You saw that in a few of his throws today. Even though it's a pro day, can't get too carried away. You got to go, man. Yeah, I got to go. So uh, I guess we'll just wrap it up right now. Please uh, follow. You guys have some coverage, too. Follow it on The Athletic, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns. Um, you can get everything that Nick and I wrote at allchgo.com, including my newsletter that's already out for you. Uh, we, of course, had a live show on CHGO uh, when everything wrapped up earlier today, too. So I encourage you to look look for all that. And um, all of our merch, hogandjohns.com. We have something new coming for you, by the way, there that I didn't even know was coming. A listener emailed obvious shirts with a suggestion and they're coming. And maybe on the, by our next episode, we'll have them live for you. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Hoganjohns.com. In the meantime, um, I think this is it for this week, but um, we're going to be at the owners meetings next week. And you know what that usually means? Um, I think we're having a sit down with Matt Eberflus sure? again. I, I think that's happening. So um, be on the lookout for, all of our coverage and our episodes next week from Orlando, Florida. Looking forward to that. Hope everybody enjoys the weekend. Enjoy the basketball that's coming, too, with the NCAA tournament. We'll talk to you next week. See ya.